accountable and accountable AI. That's all about what your algorithmic justice league is about. Does this EO get us there in some way? Absolutely. I will actually say this is a commendable step forward. And part of this is because the EO that's been issued includes teeth when it comes to government agencies using AI. So once you're tying federal dollars to who can uh, procure particular systems, then we're actually starting to see something that's going to compel change. So I am excited to see the civil rights pieces uh, within this EO. It's interesting, you talk about teeth, and there's sort of the carrot teeth situation the US is using. There's the teeth of fines the EU AI Act has been talking about. Everyone wants in on this pie of regulation or talking about it. We've got the UK AI summit about to happen. One of the critiques of that AI summit is there's not enough actual people from civil society at that summit. How much do you think the US and, and lawmakers are engaging with civil society on this? I think that is a fair critique. I am glad to share that a member of the Algorithmic Justice League will be there. But when we look at the overall roster, we don't want the tech companies writing the regulations. And so I certainly think there's more work to be done. And I also do think it's a good step forward to have the AI Safety Summit at this time. Dr. Joy, the main mechanism or tool that the executive order puts in place is big technology companies having to hand over an LLM or foundation model uh, for safety review before it is released to the wider public. Just explain how you think that will work um, as a safeguard as we develop next generations of large language models. I think it could go one of two ways. If you actually have the companies themselves setting what the safety measures are and what the safety test will be, we'll have a situation of grading your own homework, which I don't necessarily think is going to get us where we want to go. If it is a situation where you actually have third parties that are establishing what the standards are and the guidelines are, then I think you actually have a situation where the companies will have to meet specific regulations that they themselves are not setting. So it remains to be seen. I am cautiously uh, optimistic, but companies cannot be grading their own homework and then turning the it in. Sorry to interrupt you. The executive order kind of gives power to the agencies. 24 hours ago, we had um, Dr. Fei-Fei Li of Stanford on the show, and she basically said, I want to see a more even distribution of funding and control across academia, industry and the public sector. Where do you stand on that balance of who is working on AI and who has the power to regulate it? I think I would give more power uh, to the government and then to companies, but I do think it's commendable to see increased AI capacity for academics. As we know, a lot of the compute power and a lot of the data access does go mainly to the large tech companies. So it does make it difficult for researchers and outsiders to even have a sense of how to assess the risk if you don't have that access. So that's a good step forward. Your whole MIT thesis methodology basically showed the level of bias, whether it comes racial or gender, within sort of AI services from certain companies in the US. You are going out on your book tour and talking to some of the most notable names in technology, Sam Altman, for example, being one of them. How much they wanted to engage with you? How much have they been trying to, well, improve their homework before turning it in and having someone else mark it? I think it's a mixed bag. I will say for OpenAI, they have reached out to the Algorithmic Justice League multiple times and when they had their uh, bug bounty uh, program to try to look at AI vulnerabilities, they mentioned one of our white papers and so forth. So I think there is a good faith effort to reach out, but I certainly don't think it's enough. And we certainly have uh, different views. P for example, how do you uh, credit and compensate artists? I do think many companies have gotten a free pass on building LLMs with data that's been collected without consent and without compensation. You yourself being an artist, a poet, not only just researcher and policy guidance, it's important. Rate the media for a minute. Because I think there is this desire sometimes to go for the biggest headline, which often is, you know, Terminator style, AI is going to end us all. But much of the criticism has been, look, in the here and the now, we need to tackle the bias in the real data, the application where we are today. 
are we managing to move away from hyperbole and get to actually what really is the risk when it comes to AI? It depends on the outlet, right? And so I commend um, news outlets that actually bring in voices like the Algorithmic Justice League, CDT, and others. So we're getting a different perspective. But I still think there is a lot of fear mongering and doomerism. And that's one of the concerns I have even with the framing of the AI safety uh, summit. And so I certainly want to make sure we are focused on immediate and emerging harms. It's not to say we don't want to be forward looking, but we don't want to be so distracted that we don't attend to the things we already know how to address.